everybody. Como esta? This is a great venue, don't you think? I think it's kind of perfect for this kind of show. All right, thanks for coming, everybody. I can't remember being a kid and thinking, I want to be an astronaut. I don't know that there was anything that I ever really wanted. Maybe a football player, like soccer, you know. When I was young, my father was my first coach. He taught my team when I was five years old. And some people played baseball, American football, you know. I just, my family, we played football. And the guys in my band, I think a lot of people, it was a very normal kind of community thing, you know. Where I think I just don't really have the discipline. I don't want to study sports other things in life that I prefer, you know. Maybe just making connections with people and being happy, whatever that means, just enjoying life. Music uh, I fell into, I think. I started playing when I was very young and my family is very musical. My father's a singer and a, a pianist and my brother's a jazz guitar player and my sister plays piano. And I'm the worst musician in the family. Seriously, definitely the worst. So we, it was uh, Halloween and uh, we dressed as a football team. And that was the next morning, after being up all night, doing bad things. I said a house party and we were still up drinking and my friend Chipper, he said, oh, I got my camera, let's go do a shot, like down at the soccer, you know, at the football field. And so when, when the teams were all like uh, off the field for a moment, or, or maybe they were on the field, I don't know. I'll, we just ran and grabbed their balls and just sat down really quick and posed. And of course, all of them are just going, what the fuck are these guys doing? And we're just, and they took the picture, we dropped them, we ran. Stupid, you know. And that was supposed to be the cover, and we were going to call it like gold metal or something stupid like that, because we thought of ourselves as sort of a metal band. But then we realized that that name was really not good. And I think uh, I just was like taking pictures, and I had the idea to sort of throw it in a trash can. Like it was like a memory, you know. What if I was just really excited about, oh my god, yes, I could play that song. Uh, May 66. May 66, okay. That's the year I was born. Not the month, but you're close. It's funny because I live my life as a night person, but in reality I think I'm a morning person. I'm much better in the morning. Some people take a long time to wake up. I wake up and it's like, boom, I'm just, let's go. I'm sort of um, a slave to inspiration, you know. Sometimes I just don't write a song for even a year. And then all of a sudden I write 20 songs because I have some kind of emotional problem. Something happens. An event wakes you up and then I write a lot. I write a lot of music, but the way I write it is very strange. I just have like an idea for a melody and then I record like 10 seconds, you know, of some, me going do 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 you know, or whatever, or you just like this, you know? And then when it comes to time to write a record, I have hundreds of these little things and I listen to them and some of them are, I don't even know what it is. I, what, I can't even, what? What is, what is this shit? Uh, yeah, and then I have to sort of like piece it all together. And then other times you just get really inspired and write a whole song like in five minutes, you know, it just comes out. I like to read philosophy and I'm interested in politics of life and I prefer those kind of discussions, deeper discussions in life. And when I write lyrics, I feel like it's, uh, I think of music as a very serious thing, you know, it's a universal language. It's better serves sad and with sorrow. There's a lot of things happening in my life as I get older and I'm a father and it's disturbing. I never wrote like this angry old man record and I decided I was gonna do it with Hang. Natural progression as you get older, maybe you kind of feel that it's important to be a little more serious about things, you know. In my personal life, it's important to have fun. My mantra is to enjoy. There's a more important uh, underlying and overall philosophy uh, that's a much purer thing that has nothing to do with politics or people and hate and nationalism and all these things that are so disturbing in, in, our, in our universe, in our world, but I think it's much more important just to carry a good vibe and, and to treat people well with compassion because you live in a moment. So I live that way, but when I write a song it's an opportunity to say something else. Music is like this Universe, it's a universal language. It's the one thing with all the shitty fucking stuff that happens in the world that everyone understands. 
I'm sorry, but it's beautiful, isn't it? Even if it's a drunk guy with an acoustic guitar, it's something that brings people together. I just care about songs. You know, if I hear a song that moves me, I don't care who made it. If I find out later that the person who made it is a fascist, then maybe I care, and I won't listen. You know, I can't support, but I can separate an artist from the art very easily most of the time. Christina Perry has amazing songs, but here's what's really fucked up. I'm so stupid sometimes. I'm telling this friend of mine, Asher, who lives in Hollywood or at Los Angeles, and he's sort of in the music industry and stuff, and I said, yeah, I really like Christina Perry. You ever listen to Christina? And he goes, yeah, dude, you met her at my house and played music with her. And he's like, yeah, she was at my house one day and she had a guitar and you guys just started playing together. And I was like, really? And then I told my daughter that, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, I see, I don't know. I don't, I don't think fame and that stuff really occurs. Somebody's nice and they play a good song, I like it. You know this thing uh, in life, when you, you meet people when you're older, and most of the time it's very difficult to become friends with people. We're like dogs. Like we can't learn new things. As we get older, we get like, I don't know. No, no, I don't like this. It's important that people make connections in life. I think it's very important that they make connections that are real. I think it's important that they figure out who they are without being able to lie so much about it that they believe the lie. More than half of my life, I lived in a world where this connectivity didn't exist. It had to be in person, it had to be more personal. We live in a world now where there's a certain amount of uh, necessity to communicate through networks, you know? And there is a whole generation of people, my daughter's you know, friends included, I mean, that they, they never were alive in a world that didn't exist this way. There are so many things that are bad about it, so many. But I'm happy to say what I feel about it, which is that it's not good for us. But this is a personal choice for me. My life since leaving is way better. I much prefer my life now, only months afterwards. I mean, immediately it was like, Jesus. Almost every other day there's some asshole on there. I used to love your music, but you know, now I know you're a racist. And, you know, I, I just can't listen to your music anymore. And you're like, what? It's just this kind of misunderstanding and this ridiculous like assumptions and, and just misinformation that you can only read for so long before you go, this fucking sucks. I think it's important for us to get information in different ways so that it's real information that's actual and that history is honored. And, I, and I'm too sensitive. It makes me very sad. So. That I'm not in my life? I highly recommend this. It's a better life. So this is kind of a funny thing. When you have really old songs, sometimes you sing them and you realize that the lyrics mean something totally different now. In that song, I talk about DJs, but when I was talking about DJs, the whole world wasn't a DJ. You know, like everybody's a DJ now. Like, so it, it was a select few people that were really like arrogant about music. They would only play bands that they thought were cool. They didn't really seem to care about the content. They cared about how popular it was. And if it was popular, they hated it. And it, that always bothered me because I just like music. I don't care if people make money making art. I just like art. And if it speaks to me, I love it. It's us. I wrote this song. Like, so when I sing that song now, I'm just all, fucking DJs, man. And then every once in a while, I'll meet somebody, what do you got against D DJs? And I'm like, absolutely nothing. It's very different now. When the sessions are over, it's like you don't know what you did. It's so fast. And then you have to sort of take a week away from it. And then you listen. And most of the time you listen, and you go, wow, this is, like, because, we, every little detail, we're talking about the whole way, the lyrics, the, the like arrangements and everything. Some of the days that we work are 18 hours, seven days at my place. It's pretty brutal sometimes. One one-week record that I did that I think the week was a 120-hour week, like no sleep, you know? Okay, we'll sleep like a few hours and then we get up and start again. And other guys come in and they finish in four days. And it's like, you know, <laughs> 
why is this guy so talented? I can't even do that, you know? There are other people that I know well or that I've met, uh, you know, really got a good feeling from them. I don't want to spend a week in a small room with someone that I don't really think is a good, you know, person, which is a strange thing to say, but, you know, it's very personal. It's close place, and, there, and if you're with one person, you have a lot of conversations. Most of the people that come in drink, and so at the end of the night, when we're done, we have a few drinks to kind of, you know, it's really great. I mean, I, I feel like everyone I've recorded has become a very close friend. So I, I love it. I have to really love the music that they make, and, um, and I have to think that the, I li like the lyrics and, and, like, and enjoy their time. Because there's no money. We do it for free, and then the records, I mean, you know, they sell a little bit, but it's the music industry. It's not the, the, the way we set up this thing is so that we can, so I can make music, but it's not a real smart, good business industry to be in. But I love it. It's sort of my solution to continue, to make it very inexpensive and uh, be able to do records very quickly without all of this, these other things. Because it's, I could talk about it forever. There's a million things about why we do what we do. Collaboration thing that I like, like a traditional producing is what I like. I, it's the producers that I grew up watching that were almost like part of the songwriting process and everything from the beginning, before recording and everything. That's the, what I am passionate about. I'm always listening to those things. Mostly just what I'm working on. That's, that is sort of the issue with producing. I'm always in the middle of a record, so right now I'm in the middle of four records, and it was five to six just before the tour I finished two, because a lot of these one-week records, we record them, and then we they just sit until I have time between tours to listen to it. Sometimes overdubs, things like that I do, like maybe some keyboards or bass tambourine, shaker, maraca, you know. This stuff happens later when I mix. We have a rule. There's a toilet, it's only one little tiny room. It's like the size of the stage, little room. And I'm like here at the computer and the guy's like right here and sometimes if they're really loud singers, it's terrible, all right? And I'm like, even through the headphones, like ah! And I've had trumpet players. You don't want a trumpet player like within 20 feet. It's, I've lost hearing, you know? So it's very uh, personal, but there's, there is a toilet. And we kind of have a rule because it's in the basement that if you're going to go number two, you have to go upstairs <laughs> into the main house. Yeah, because, you know, it's like somebody takes a shit. We're going to be living with that for a while. So, yeah. But, you know, people, I think they're pretty good about flushing. There's a couple guys that forget. You know how they are. Normally this set list was over like a while ago. I was like, ah, yeah, I'm at the end, it's cool. But this is so much fun. And I know it's Sunday and people have to work tomorrow, but I'll, I'm gonna stay for a little while. I was trying to remember after the show when I went back to my friend's house, what songs I played. And I was trying to make a different set list because I think I just didn't really follow the set list I had. And I think maybe I played this song, but I'm gonna play it anyway, but I don't. It's not that one. <laughs> if I don't know the song, I, it's probably a bad idea for me to try to play. When you have to play songs, it's important to serve your band's own mental needs. So you have to be a certain amount of self-indulgent in the music that you play, of course what you write, how you make music, what you do. But sometimes your set list has to be a little self-indulgent too, so the band feels inspired. Otherwise, it's no fun. That said, you kind of got to play the hits, you know what I mean? Because people pay to see your band and you, they want to have a good time, so they don't live in your everyday life. They see you once every three years, and if you don't play that song they love, they're pissed off. And I'd rather them be happy than me be happy. We do play some songs once they were written, we never did not play them. There's not many, though. For so many years, we had this list in our rehearsal place, which is at our drummer's house. We had this, this cardboard on the wall, and it, there's something like 35 songs. And uh, especially once Joe Raposo, the, the newer bass player that we have, Joe Raposo, when he joined the band, these were the songs that he knew. For many years, that, that was what our well, that we didn't have the whole catalog anymore. We only had those songs. 
But I think what happens is sometimes you play a song for a really long time and it gets very uninspired and it loses its the muse, you know, and everybody in the band, you can almost look around and people are like, ah. But what happens, I think, is that when if I write a set list and I know that my band is really not feeling a song, I can hear it. And so I take it off the set list for a while. You just have to do that. Violins is a lag writing song that may have never not been on a set list since we put it out. You always have other songs that are new and, you know, as long as you keep working, there's always something else. So it balance. There's a balance. It happens as the longer you're in a band, and I have seen our band many times for years and years. We're playing almost the same set, and it really bothers everyone in the band, but no one says anything because nobody really wants to bum anybody out, you know? So we just kind of get together, and we have little jokes, lots of them. You know, like someone will yell at me on stage, like, come on, Razorburn, you know, like, because Razorburn is often the last song in the set. And so if, a, if somebody in the band is feeling sort of uninspired on stage, but just kind of trying to do it, they'll yell, come on, Razorburn. Like, because as soon as we get there, we know we're done, you know. You have to pay attention and you have to talk about it. And we do every once in a while. And when we do, we, we try to add some new stuff. And you can just feel it. It happens on tour sometimes, in the middle of a tour or even a weekend, I'll think, this isn't working. And then I'll say it at Soundcheck. I'll say, let's bring some other material and you guys seem really like not into this. And somebody will say, yes. And then we do it. It's like a family, you know? The difficult thing is that you want to play some kind of the same songs because you've got to get really good at playing them. There's a chemistry element when you're on tour. It's like if you're a band that changes your set list every night, then you never really get into a groove, you know? And you sort of, there are elements to it that you have to, there is some repetition. And repetition is somewhat good because, yeah, you have to get the chemistry, you know? Danny, help! Help me! I'm being attacked by uh, people that speak. He's gonna, he's gonna finish my set, and I'm just gonna sit here and drink. Is that cool? You guys good with that? Cho, cho, Barcelona. I love you, love you, love you, love you. Gracias, everybody. See you next time. Good night.